One of the biggest misconceptions, biggest misunderstandings a lot of people get involved in business is actually the cost of actually getting in business and getting customers, getting new, new leads, getting people to do business with you, how to create sales and generate revenue. So I've spent the last 21 years as an entrepreneur, had many different ways, many different methods to get business started. And I want to share with you a couple of websites why so many people right now considering business that they've never thought they'd get involved in, never thought they'd get involved in entrepreneurship, they never thought they'd get involved in working for themselves, they never thought they'd get involved in something that they never thought uh, they'd have a, a desire to be involved in. And let me show you why people are considering it right now. So number one, 1 1.9 more people file for unemployment. Over 42 million people right now are on unemployment. So people are saying, you know what? I don't have a job. I got laid off. This pandemic is really kicking our tail. I need to depend on the government assistance to help me pay my bills, at least help me get the finances to start a job. And some people say, you know what? If I'm just asking for more money to help me find a job to get laid off again, I might as well start a business now. Now is the perfect time. A lot of people say this is counter what everybody is thinking about. This is the perfect time for you to actually start a business. I started my business in the middle of a what they call a bull market. Everything was going right. Everything was going right. Just to find out, this is 1999, just to find out a lot of people got on the entrepreneurial bandwagon 2000. 2001, 2002. Why? It was during the worst of times. So I saw in the market when, when I was getting, getting out the Marine Corps, people getting involved in the height of the market in entrepreneurship at the wrong time, where one, two, three, four years later during the during the recession of 01, 02, where people started saying, you know what, now's the time to get involved in business. And this is another example of history repeating itself. Chicago, what about Chicago? It's tra right here where I'm from, 52% of people in Chicago experienced earnings declines over the past two months. Based on based on coronavirus, based on a lockdown, and if you go down to this report here, this is all the unemployment, unemployment going down over time. Then boom, right in in 2020. Here's another thing: smaller paychecks. Los Angeles leads America's 10 largest metro areas lost on on lost income. 63% of people in LA significant behind their finances. Here, we're here in Chicago, it's 52%. So in other words, just for example, here in Chicago, one out of two people have a serious decline in income based on coronavirus. I suspect that in your city, your town, your neighborhood, I suspect that it's pretty much the same too as well. Another thing for you to consider, there's another wave of layoffs happening. Another wave of layoffs, not just not gonna help hurt middle income America, is going to hurt who? Higher income paid workers. So. More so now, people are considering entrepreneurship. So how do you get business? How do you get leads? How do you get customers? Well, I'm gonna go over some different ways for you to get customers that costs money, okay? It costs a lot of money. And this is a big reason why people don't get involved in business. But I will also give you a solution, give you an idea and a thought of what doesn't cost money. And it's something that I've been using for the last eight, nine years now systematically month in, month out, week in, week out, year in, year out to shatter and break records. So right in front of me, if you, if you see right in front of me, I have the examples of what I've done right and more so what I've done wrong. And so when we're looking at these examples, oftentimes people say, well, I'm going to get business because of, of lead generation sources. So, so, so let's talk about it. When, when you're looking at the body of marketing to get customers, to get people to do business with you, People say, you know what? I'm going to depend on mail. I'm going to mail out a, a invitation, something that uh, people will generate interest in terms of calling me. Let's take an example here. Look at Xfinity. Th what I'm sharing with you here is just one one week's worth of marketing and advertising. They sent they sent me uh, this this large catalog. I mean, this ain't cheap. I mean, this beautiful brochure, color, right? To tell me how great Xfinity is, and they didn't just send it once. They sent it. By the way, this is just one week. This is just one week. How many times did it get me to try to convert over from AT&T or whatever provider I was with to go, go to them? And I think when I got these uh, mailers, I think I was already with Xfinity. I think I was already, already with Comcast. So I don't know why I was getting their mailers. Big waste of money, in my opinion. Why? Because I have them. This is, this is uh, fairly expensive. I mean, if you're looking at one catalog, uh, you're looking at maybe five, six bucks per catalog to, to generate three, four, five, six bucks a catalog to, 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 to generate this type of quality material. You look at these uh, uh, mailers, you got these cards where you can, you can you can peel these off and have people feel good that they're saving 200 bucks by subscribing to Xfinity. These are some things that are in our mail, in our junk mail for people to consider, hey, maybe I should move to Xfinity, okay? Speaking of mail, I'm in the insurance industry. And it's typical for a lot of financial advisors, typical for a lot of people in the insurance industry to send me invitations. Now, I don't know why I'm 46 years old. I don't know why I'm being invited to a social security seminar. <laughs> Some of y'all playing a joke on me or something like that. I'm on the wrong list, man. But I'm getting invited to a social security seminar here just so somebody can, I haven't even opened this up, just so somebody can talk to me about social security. This is an Oprah at a library. So not only does somebody have to pay for the mailer, Pay for the stamp because this is this is a pre-sorted, looks like first first class mail to make sure it gets to me in a, a specific time frame. 
but a financial person here is inviting to the seminar, and they had to rent out the facility, and in this case, a very low, a low cost facility, which is the library. Be it low cost or no cost, okay? So another one could get very fancy. Another, another financial group was inviting me to come to their financial advisory seminar, and uh, not only would they invite me to talk to me about how to improve my financial situation, but they're willing to, uh, Going to feed me steak, okay? And there's two dates I can choose from at, at this beautiful restaurant called Eddie Merlot's. Delicious steak. So many different ways uh, to, to get me to come to their seminar. So it's kind of another, here's another steak dinner, okay? People wanted me to come to their steak dinner so therefore they can get me in front of them. So therefore they pitch me their idea on how to maximize my finances, et cetera, et cetera. By the way, I used to do that. So here, here's a couple marketing materials. When I, when I invited people to my seminar, this is what they receive in the mail, okay? They get this, a mailer. It's a wedding style invitation. They get some ideas that I'll be discussing during this seminar. I was so confused about branding. <laughs> I had my company brand, I'm a personal brand. So I spent money for this mailer. I spent money on branding. Let's take a look at this. This is, this is my personal branding services, right? To create my brochure, to create my marketing plan, to create my, uh, my, my, my team brochure, my company brochure, $6,000, okay? When was this? This is uh, 2000 and 2002. Okay. And that wasn't good enough because I went back to them in 2006 and I spent another $16,000. I'm going to zoom in on that. I spent another $16,000 on additional services. Okay. So if you put $16,000 and $5,000 and $5, uh, $6,600 together, I mean, I'm looking at $23,000, $25,000. And this is some of the results. I was able to create a DVD with my face on it, I was able to create a brochure. Boom, okay, Wonder, awesome brochure. <laughs> I'm telling you this, man, brochures and all this shit don't sell, okay? Beautiful folder. Inside it, I created a newsletter. All these different things to help people become more educated and informed about their finances, and when they think about money, finance, they think about me. I had a newsletter, all these different things. Boom, boom, right? These are things that I did in terms of marketing to get people to do business with me. And I, by the way, I did that for 12 years. I mean, look at the binders. These were my mentors. I, I got a seminar system on how to cut, help people cut taxes. I bought this system because my because I was I was an entrepreneur. I was just looking for people to coach me. I was just looking for people to teach me. Well, this person sold me their kit, their their package, and this binder right here. This is fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred bucks, right? And so, in my sense, is like if I spend fifteen hundred bucks to teach you how to make ten grand, it makes sense, right, for the rest of my career. So that's why I would buy something like this. So this would give me, uh, you know, different chapters and ideas and how to do this, the mindset, the strategy, da 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 da. The actual, <laughs> I'm dating myself. The actual um, PowerPoint presentations, right, which I created into a, a booklet format. Okay, booklet format, my face on it. Boom, marketing, advertising. This costs a lot of money. Oh, other one over here. Now we can tax. What about this one? Annuity seminar system. Another fifteen hundred dollars. And then I realized, man, I'm not good at selling at seminars because I'm coming from the Marine Corps. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to speak in front of people. I get nervous. I'm not sure if I'm selling the right stories. I'm not sure if I'm telling the right stories. I'm not sure if I'm listening to people the right way. Uh, people are sitting with their arms crossed like this. So I got a whole binder on seminar selling science to teach me to go, to go through the mechanics. Blah, blah, blah. Another 15, I think this is 2000 bucks. So these binders right here, 1500 bucks, 1500 bucks, $3,000. Easy, $5,000 of buying this here to self-educate myself on how to market and how to advertise. And if you're watching this video to this point, I'm gonna save you a lot of money. If you're watching this video right now, I'm gonna say, you don't have to do none of this stuff. You have to do none of this stuff. Okay, so let, let's continue. One of the thoughts I had was, maybe I should write a book. So I went, through this, I went through this workshop in New York because that's part of marketing. I'm gonna write a book and people are gonna do business with me. I'm gonna be in the bookstores. I'll be known as an Amazon best-selling author. I'm gonna be known as a Wall Street selling best, whatever. So I went through this book breakthrough. These amazing people were gonna help me. I, I spent like seven or 800 bucks for this introductory seminar. But in order for me to actually do the work, I had to spend another $20,000. <laughs> I spent another 20 grand to get mentored in how to write a book. Just to let you guys know, I'm still not a published author. <laughs> I do a lot of blogs, uh, I do a lot of articles, uh, I do a lot of um, videos, I just, I'm just not an author. But yet, I've made millions of dollars. How did I do that? Okay, let's, let's take a look at this. 
So in order for you to make money, either you get mail, you get flyers, you put an ad in a newspaper or magazine, you get people to telemarket for you, hire telemarketers, boom, 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 make phone calls for you and give you the leads. You do ads on uh, radio, 30 second spots, 60 second spots, that costs money, a lot of money. TV, a lot, a lot of money. 30 second commercials, 60 second commercials, a lot of money. I mean, think about it, every time you watch a YouTube video, you're watching this YouTube video right now. You're watching this video on Facebook. You're being interrupted before you watch this video to watch a what, 15 second ad. You can skip the ad, but you can either watch a 15 second ad, a 30 second ad, or a 60 second ad, or whatever, but you're paying for that now online. Here's the thing, let's go over here real quick. You wanna advertise online? No problem, knock yourself out. I'm in the insurance business. I'm in the financial service world. The most expensive words in Google AdWords, business services, bail bonds. Why, why, why are people paying a lot of money for, for bail bonds? Because when you're in trouble and you Google bail bonds, you want to make sure you hit the, the number one bail bondsman. That's why they're willing to pay a lot of money. Casinos, lawyers, asset management, people in investment advising, insurance, 48 bucks. And every time you click, check this out. Every time you click a keyword online, advertising through Google, Every time you click, not to say that you're elite, every time you click in, in my business, it's 48 bucks a click. Not to say they're ever gonna fill out an application, not to say they're gonna fill out and say, hey, I'm a potential customer. No, a click, a click to go to your website, a click to get them to whatever you want to show them on how to potentially get them as a customer for you to do business with them. Okay, let's take another look. Things evolved, right? You can contact lead generation companies where they do all this stuff for you. And all you gotta do is pay them the cost of them doing business plus a premium, so therefore you can get some leads. Okay, Bobby, very common practice in my industry, very common practice in a lot of, in, in, in real estate, in insurance, business consulting, to buy leads, lead generation. Email, email marketing. A lot of people are treating their email like they do their regular mail, it's junk mail. I mean, check this out, when, when's the last time you actually checked your email to be solicited? Matter of fact, there's filters and junk mail and spam filters for you not to get solicitations to products and services. So email even has its filters and has its limitations. Text message has become very popular right now. Send me your number, boom, we'll send you, you, you send your text message, you're on a text message list. Another way to get business, costs money. Social media, social media ads, it's a lot of money. If you wanna consider uh, advertising through Instagram and Facebook and, and whatnot, it costs you a lot of money. Events, a lot of money. How do I know that? We do events two, three times a year. This is a lot of money to get people to do business with you, okay? Now here's the cool part, our events are self-funded to get business by buyer associates. But think about this, if, if, if I just wanted people to come to my seminar, just like I showed you my dinner seminar, I have to send out a piece of mail, that costs money, so let me give me an example. When I sent out a piece of mail, 5,000 pieces of mail, I chose three zip codes, that cost the mail house 2,500 bucks. Postage, it's now what, 53, 55 cents per, for postage? Think about 5,000 times 50, that's, you're looking at 2,500 bucks for postage. 2,800 bucks for postage, just a stamp to get sent in the mail. And then, you gotta feed people, right? Well, I fed people. This is a, this is a check of me doing a seminar. I spent 500 bucks on food for people to come to my seminar so I could potentially sell them as a potential client. It costs money. But you're watching this video because you don't want to spend any money on advertising. Right? You wanna make sure that you can be in a position where you're making millions of dollars. What having to go all the rigmarole on, and things right now because of Zoom, because of COVID and all that stuff, people are not going to online meetings. But you still gotta get people to your online meeting. That costs money. So I say all that, I share you all this. Another way, oh by the way, another way to get a business is to become more educated. I, I have a, behind my last name I have designation. You know, John Smith, comma, MBA. John Smith, comma, PhD. John Smith, CLU, CHFC, CFP, C. CPA, CFA, so many designations, alphabet soup. But guess what, let me break it down to you folks. If you're an entrepreneur, guess what? You don't get paid for knowing, you get paid for doing. So you're talking to a guy, you're watching this video, a guy that doesn't have a college degree. Matter of fact, my wife, my wife's got the college degree, okay? This is my wife, she went to the University of Pitt. She had a full ride scholarship, no college debt. She's a, a full ride scholarship at the University of Pittsburgh. She's got a degree in finance. So between the two of us, she's a more smarter one. More smarter, more attractive, more, more athletic one between the two of us. But you're talking to a guy that high school diploma, you're talking to a guy that makes millions of dollars a year, cash flow millionaire type status, type stuff, and the United States Marine. And I figured out a way to make a million bucks a year without having to spend money on advertising. How? Wanna know how? Okay, I'll show you how. It's called this. Wanna know? Right here. It's called what? Word of mouth. What? Could it be re really that easy? Yes. Word of mouth. St talking, speaking, talking to a lot of people, getting the word out. How? By sending out referrals. Hey, who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? Hey, 
this person had a great experience with me. Hey, this person experienced zero losses during the crash in the stock market. Hey, this person during the worst of times through the policy that they bought got a tax-free check to help them go through some of the toughest times in their life. Hey, this person has got an incentive to share, right? They, they in our industry, you're regulated to a hundred dollar gift per year per customer. There's some ads here where if you refer a friend, so, so for example, if you refer a friend, Xfinity, if you refer a friend, you get some, you get some discount. How many guys have seen you being solicited by your credit card companies? Say, hey, if a friend opens up a credit card, you get 500 bucks off on your next credit card bill. Chase banks do that. Hey, if your friend opens up a $10,000 CD, you get a $500, $500 credit to your checking account. Why? Because that's an incentive to share. So the financial service companies, banks, businesses use it a way of word of mouth to create an incentive to share your content, to share your ad, to share, right? So this is word of mouth. Well, no, no one, phone calls. What does it cost outside of your cell phone bill? What does it cost you to make phone calls? I, I used to come from an era, <laughs> I'm really dating myself. I came from an era where when we got a cell phone, we had to pick an either a 250 minute per month plan, a 500 minute per month plan, a thousand minute per month plan, a 2,500 minute per, uh, per month plan, or you played a premium, premium monthly subscription to your cell phone for unlimited minutes. Now it's all unlimited minutes. But uh, uh, how, how many of you guys remember the day where you had to call somebody after 7 p.m. because it was free calls after 7 p.m.? <laughs> that was my era. But phone calls. You make phone calls. What is it co- outside your cell phone bill? What does it cost you to make phone calls? What does it cost you to call on a referral? What does it cost to call on a client who had a wonderful experience with you? Say, hey, who do you know? What, what does it cost you to go to a networking event? There's a bunch of free chambers of commerce events you can attend before you decide to become a member. There's Toastmasters where not only you can pick up a skill and learn a public speaking, but you can network with other people in sales or VPs of companies or people that want to work on, on their public speaking skills at some of these Toastmaster events. Networking, right? That's another way for you to get busy without costing you a dime. How about this? How about, well, this might cost you a little bit of money. How about you send business to somebody or you do business with somebody? During the pandemic, I asked for 10 people that did essential oils. Why? Because I, I like essential oils all over the house here, here in business. Lavender helps my baby go to bed. I was asking for people, who knows people that have essential oils? I did business with them. Now, maybe down the road, they might consider doing business with me. But one of the greatest ways for you to do, for people to do business with you is you do business with them first. You, if, if you're going to need a haircut, would you like to have a hair, uh, your barber as a potential client? If you're doing business with somebody that does your website, uh, the guy that did our website, Dustin, he eventually became a customer. Uh, talked to one of our agents and got a policy. Lo and behold, this, you know, sadly, this, this guy a year, uh, year and some change later has a stroke at 38 years old. But thankfully, he got an insurance policy. He survived. By the way, right here, I'll click right here. His story, Dustin Frampton here, about how life insurance saved him. So make sure you check out this video, his story. But I did business with him first. He eventually became a customer. We gave business, we sent business, and eventually he did business with us. Now his wife is a licensed agent with us. Now she's saying, hey, everybody needs to get insurance. Why? Because she had an amazing experience because after her husband went through a stroke, got a, a check from the insurance company, from the death benefits. So people think that in the insurance business, in the insurance industry, the only way to get money from an insurance company is if you die. Not true today. She experienced that firsthand. She said, you know what? Nobody can tell me nothing about the insurance industry because it saved our family because she had a great experience. Now, she's out there getting business and we're getting business as a whole as an agency because of what? Word of mouth. So when you look into this thing, so well, Matt, you know, this is, uh, this takes a little bit of work. I know. Or you can go the other way and drain your 401k. You can charge up your credit cards because you're afraid of working on a skill called phones. You're afraid of working on a skill on how to connect and relate with people. You're afraid of working on, on, on how to uh, build a human connection. Listen, when, when Mark Cuban, when Mark Cuban bought the Dallas Mavericks, he's a billionaire. Mark Cuban at that time was a billionaire. He bought the Dallas Mavericks. And, and he says, he says, the first thing I did when I bought the Dallas Mavericks, this is Mark Cuban, one of the sharks on Shark Tank. When I bought the Mavericks, the first thing I did as I went to all the season ticket, I got a list of all the season ticket holders. Boom, season ticket holes, boom. And what did, what did Mark Cuban, the billionaire do? You know what he did? Made phone calls. Hey, Mark Cuban here. I uh, saw that you're a season ticket holder. I'm the new owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Consider buying a season ticket again because when the next several years here, we're gonna build a championship team that you'd be very proud of. I'm gonna build a championship team. Please buy a season ticket. Guess what happened several years later? <laughs> they won a championship. NBA championship. Why? Because he made phone calls. What did it cost him to do that? Nothing outside of a phone bill. So if you're considering entrepreneurship or you're in business, you've been wasting all this money or you've been, you've been told to go to this company, to go to this company, they're going to give you business, they're going to give you leads, they're giving give you customers. Listen, man, here, here, here's a train of thought, something for you to consider. There's a saying out there that says, give a man a fish, 
he'll eat for a day. But teach him how to fish, he or she will eat forever. Question for you is what do you want to do? Do you want to build a business on steroids or do you want organic growth for gains that you can keep? And when I'm thinking about you going out there making phone calls, there's a book out there that was recommended by my mentor, Patrick David, host of Value Tame and CEO of PHP Agency. It's called The Game of Numbers. The Game of Numbers. Let me, let me, let me, let me read you a quick passage because sometimes people are so afraid of making phone calls. People are so afraid of actually contacting people. He says this, the reason why people don't do that, people would rather go buy leads from somebody, people would rather go advertise, is this, because they're afraid of the word no. What? They're afraid of the word no that most people have been personally rejected and that hurts. And these are all unconscious beliefs. They exist only in our own anxiety and sensitivity. They have no basis in externally verifiable reality. We catch somebody in the middle of the day, they're distracted to even listen to you, and they say no. They didn't even give your solicitation a moment of thought, not even to hurt your feelings. And a couple of minutes later, they don't even remember your interaction with them. The electric shock of rejection that hurts is entirely generated in our unconscious, subconscious mind. It didn't happen, but no less real because we believe it happened. And believing that it happened, and it seems to happen almost every time we prospect or make phone calls, we will eventually have to stop prospecting because it's just too painful. Listen, I, I remember going through high school. I remember uh, as a teenage kid growing up and afraid to ask the girl I wanted to ask to homecoming. <laughs> I remember I was afraid to ask the girl, the girl I wanted to ask to prom, to prom. Why? Because nobody taught me the skills. Nobody showed me the rope. Nobody, you know, no guy, all my boys were willing to not laugh at me versus, hey, if you got game. He didn't want to share me his game. Why? Because he wanted to give me a secret sauce. Because he, he wanted the girl that he wanted to take, that everybody wanted to take the homecoming. He wanted her for him. So, so when you're looking at your life, when you're looking at your business, you look at all these different ways for you to market and to advertise. The easiest way for you to get business done, pick up a phone, make some phone calls, make some connections. So, so if you're considering going into business, and instead of draining your money or following the promises of somebody that says, hey, come do business with us because we're going to give you leads or we'll provide you leads. And here's what I find. These guys jump all the time. Jump, 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 jump. Because they don't want to actually build a skill of learning how to pick up the phone, make a human connection, do business with somebody, create a great experience, get them to start talking about you, get them to start blasting on social media because they had a great experience with you. Instead of picking up that skill, which costs you zero money, People would rather go out there and buy some leads. And here, here's the thing too as well. <clears throat> Depends on what type of business you are, what type of product or service you're, you're, you're trying to market. For most businesses, it's probably, you're probably easy. It's easy for you if you're selling a low thinking type of product. For example, these, these face guards that everybody are buying right now, it's a, it's a low thinking type product. It's a commodity. So maybe for your business, it might make sense for you to advertise, spend a $10,000 to get to make $15,000. So you net $5,000. It might make sense for you to do that. I don't know, for me, if I'm spending 10,000, I want to get 100,000 or 200,000 back, or better yet, spend zero. Because here's the thing, if you spend zero dollars and get all this money in return for making sales by spending zero dollars, what's your return on investment? What's your ROI in that campaign, on that initiative? Some people say 100%, 200%, you know what your return is? You spend zero dollars and get a return back, you know what your rate, or, rate of uh, uh, ROI is? Your rate of investment, rate of return on that investment is? It's infinite, it, there's no end to it, why? As long as you keep doing it, business comes at you. And let me show you, let me, let me show you an example of that. I've been doing this. this, let me show you my numbers from last year. We spent zero dollars in marketing and advertising. But we did 12, we did 12, almost 12 million dollars in business, 11.6 million dollars in business in 2019, 11.6 million. I helped generate 11.6 million dollars in sales because we had zero cost in advertising and we instituted a word of mouth campaign. Well, what is it in terms of, in terms of revenue, okay? Uh, let, let's take a look in terms of revenue. Just in the last 90 days since this whole COVID crisis, what did my guys earn as a result of in, installing a word of mouth campaign? <clears throat> From this date, the beginning of the pandemic, to current date since the day this video was shot. I paid our guys 482,000 in commission, 213,000 in commission, remember this is a little over 90 days, $201,000 in commission, $64,000 in commission, $53,000 in commission, $49,000 in commission, $46,000 in commission, $45,000 in commission, uh, 45, 45, 43. That's just my top 10. Over the last 90 days, spending how much money? Zero in lead generation, all by word of mouth. So it's just not happening for me. It's happening obviously for the people that we're coaching, teaching, lead. it can happen to you. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. All you need to do is pick up a skill. So if you're going in business, my suggestion to this is number one, 
the easiest thing to do if you're considering entrepreneurship and you want to get business and you have a high amount of revenue to replace your job that you don't have to go back to after being laid off or a job that you uh, don't want to go back to because you're dissatisfied with what they pay you and they overwork you is number one consider if you're going into business consider a service-based industry why service-based because you don't have to create any money to create inventory to sell right if you can sell a service right it's easier less cost and zero to no inventory so number pick a service-based industry the second thing is pick a very wealthy and mature industry that whatever product or service that you sell per transaction you make a lot of margin you make a lot of money i was interviewing damon john i said i said you're one of the sharks on shark tank i said if you have a choice between picking a, a product that has a high amount of volume versus a product that has lower volume and higher amount a uh, higher amount of margin which would you sell you said the, the one with the, with the higher margin because higher margin means higher revenue which allows you to reinvest back into your business the third thing is work with a mentor work with someone who's been there done that right now there's a lot of mentors in the marketplace today just people don't know how to seek out after them and people say well will you mentor me will you mentor me? That's, that, that's not the way they ask for a mentor the way you ask for mentors, hey, listen, I see that you're doing this. I see that you're doing this type of work. I see that you're successful helping other folks after researching you for a period of time. If I'm able to do this, if I'm able to do that, if I'm able to make myself available, could you coach, teach me, and mentor me? And if they say yes, be very coachable, very aligned to them, very responsive. Why? Because again, a lot of people reach them out to me. And sometimes people say, can you mentor me? And I'm like, no, what, what do you need? What do you need? And it takes them a week to get back to me. You don't want mentoring. You're not even accessible. You're not even available. You're casual with this thing. That's an easy way to turn off a potential mentor, okay? So if you want to be mentored by somebody, show that you're available. Show that you're responsive. And then when they mentor you, guess what you do? You implement the things that they taught you to do. Hey, mentor, this is my results from doing it. And by the way, I did it faster than you did. Awesome. By the way, any mentor worth their weight wants you to do what they did sooner, faster, and better. It's a reflection of them mentoring you. I'm like, I, by the way, I just got off a mentoring call with Pastor Rashawn Bay and his wife Wanda. Well, it took us a year and seven months to accomplish. They did it in three. I was so proud of them. I was so proud of them. You know what that tells me? It tells them we know what we're doing. Our systems are refined. Our processes are followed, uh, easy to follow. And it's duplicatable and simple. It's a reflection of that. So pick a mentor that's willing to help you in this endeavor to install a word of mouth type of marketing system and last but not least you got to work on your craft every day you got to work on your craft every day well i want to do this i want to do that yes but did you work it on every day everybody said well you know michael jordan he's so god-given talent michael jordan but did you realize how much he had to work out did you realize that what he put his body through we were, we we're talking with his trainer tim grover he says after the game at night he go up to michael and say hey mike five six or seven what did that mean hey mike are we working at five six or seven o'clock in the morning before practice the, the morning after a game michael put himself to that Tabor, he worked on his craft every day. So when you're looking at this opportunity of entrepreneurship, the book that we're reading this month is called Mastery by Robert Greene. Profound book. And I, I want to read you from the introduction, just from the introduction, the quote. Here's what he says. Everyone holds his fortune in his own hands like a sculptor, the raw material will fashion into a figure. But it's the same with the type of artistic activity as with all others. We are merely born with the capacity and cap capability to do it. The skill to mold the material into what we want must be learned and attentively cultivated. So if you want to build a business where you don't have to spend a lot of money on marketing, you'd rather create jobs with that money instead, learn how to mold, cultivate, and craft your ability to get business without spending any money. It can happen. Don't let all these ads try to get you, hey man, ad, ad, advertise, advertise, buy this product, buy this product, let me get you some leads, get you, no. There's ways to make millions of dollars if you learn how to pick up the phone and establish a word of mouth marketing campaign. Give this a shot. I'd love to know what you think. Put your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad. Uh, if you're following us on Instagram, make sure you follow us at Money Smart Guy and Seven Figure Squad too as well. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for this endeavor. I'm excited for the things that you're able to learn. To, to pick up a skill set where you can make millions and millions of dollars. Listen, it's been the most relieving thing. My wife and I, we've not been a burden on anybody. We've not been a burden on the family. We've not been a burden on the church. We've not been a burden on the government. Actually, it's been the opposite. We've been able to bless and create a lot of jobs. We've been able to bless a lot of charities and things that we support. We've been able to invest in businesses. Why? Because we mastered this craft. Instead of spending money unnecessarily on marketing, we invested it and kept jobs. We didn't lay anybody off. Everybody's laying people off. We didn't lay anybody off. We kept jobs. And if you're watching this video, that means we're just only growing and expanding at the recording of this video. I'm excited to have an update on this video another year later after you see some of the success stories we have to and through this uh, trying times that America is facing. So with that being said, again, drop your thoughts, comments below. Let me know your feedback. Appreciate you tuning in. Till we meet again. Continue to smart. Continue to smart.
and be money smart today.